All right, all right. We are live and living color. It is October the 1st. <laughs> are you excited? It is a new month. It is a new quarter. It is the final quarter of 2024. Can you imagine? It's the first day of the rest of your life. So I want to welcome everybody here and thank you for, for joining in our double your sales in the next 90 days. Bold, big, hairy, audacious goal to double your sales, double your business in the next 90 days. And so today we're going to be talking about the five superpowers that's going to give you the emotional, spiritual, physical endurance to be able to successfully complete your challenge. And so if we haven't met yet, ladies and gentlemen, my name is James Tanti. I've been in sales leadership now for over three decades. It's been a incredible journey. It's been an extremely rewarding journey. I've made all the mistakes in the book, took those learnings, and I'm going to share them, some of them at least, with you here today. We've uh, been very blessed and fortunate to have many, many successes on, on route. And, you know, I believe that the essence of a push month is all about pushing yourself to be a little bit better. Don't you agree? So, so we're going to jump right into things here. And, uh, so let's talk about why, what's the purpose behind doubling your opportunity doubling your profits and i think when we're in the in, in a business and we're in the sales and we're in the people business we are always looking at outcomes and and so what drives us and what's going to give us that fuel is going to be a strong purpose and so so why do you some of you are going for 30 days but the challenge we have here and some of you are already enrolled in the challenge and if you haven't enrolled in the challenge yet we're going to give you an opportunity to do so because there's some really cool benefits and we'll, we'll share with you a link later. So why do you really want to double? Well, I believe it's, it's because it challenges you to be a better version of yourself. And what that really gives you is an incredible level of conviction. It gives you, uh, it elevates your confidence, it boosts your enthusiasm. And in the end, you become a, a better person. You become a better version of you. Now, I want to share with you uh, something where somebody posted and they said, double your sales in 90 days. Is this possible in this market? Well, listen, it sounds, it sounds big. It sounds hairy. It sounds audacious. But here's the reality. Only 10 to 20% of that is external and 80 to 90% of it is internal. So let's, let's kind of evaluate that for a moment is some of our best, months, our best years in history were on economic declines. And that's an external. So did what were was there resistance out there? Absolutely. Is there resistance in the marketplace today? There always has been, there always will be. You can you can focus on geopolitical, you can focus on economic, you can focus on social issues. But the reality is is you can't control that. You can control what you think, feel and do. And that's the 80 to 90%. And we're going to cover that today. So to answer that question, absolutely, yes. With it, in inflated prices in, in this marketplace, in, in all reality, unless there's an absolute depression, you're really, you're really not going to be affected because upstairs and the actions you take are what it's all about. So let's jump right into the superpowers here. The first superpower for you to double your, your sales in the next 90 days is to have smarter goals. Now, all of you that have joined us are sales champions. You are, you are sales leadership in your realm. And you, you, you've come to a point where I know how to set a goal. And I trust that you've already established your goal for the month for the final quarter of the year. And I do believe it's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time dated, but right now I'm going to talk about the ER, not the emergency room, but the ER of your smarter goals. And that is, E is ecological. What does ecological mean? 
it means that the goal is not just good for you. It's, it's good for your spouse. It's good for your family. It's good for your community. It's, it's holistically good. And, and it's set up to be non-conflicting. Sometimes we set big goals, yet there's some confliction taking place. Maybe it's confliction with our values or confliction with our schedule. And when there's a conflict, it sets us up for failure. It sets us up to hit a wall. It sets us up for unnecessary challenge. So when we're setting an ecologically sound goal, we want to make sure that we will not self-sabotage. For example, I'm going for my best quarter in history. And when I make that decision, I need to make sure that I'm not going on vacation and increasing activity. That's obviously a self-sabotaging outcome, isn't it? So ecologically sound. And the R in smarter is to review and reflect and revise activity. Not revise your outcome, but revise activity. So if you just write a goal and you don't embrace it internally, if you do not manifest it, if you're not looking at it, obsessing on it, if you're not reflecting on what the outcome is going to be, the emotional intensity of it will recede over time. And that's why when you're doing a 90-day push, you really have to stay enrolled. So, so superpower number one, smarter goal. Superpower number two, mindset. Okay. Now, when we talk about mindset, that's that mindset, that's the internal aspect. And I believe that how do we sustain a champion, a high performance mindset? I believe rituals, rituals are what creates habits. And when we have positive, empowering habits, we don't have to really try. It we, It becomes conditioned reflex. It becomes automated. And so, so the rituals on your mindset, I believe, starts with in the morning as well as in the evening. In the morning, we prime ourselves for success. In the evening, we, we debrief, we celebrate the little wins, and we prepare for the next day to hit the ground running on purpose. And so, so when we talk about those rituals, the rituals we're referring to might be, well, maybe a ritual is getting up, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth, and having your cup of coffee, and then going to the gym, or, or maybe that's your ritual. But at some point before you really pick up the phone, engage with other people, I believe you need to fill your cup emotionally, mentally. And that is, is to choose a great book. Now, some of you say I'm not a reader, but leaders are readers, so start challenging yourself to read and not just watch YouTube videos or watch your screen on your phone. So do, do plug in to read because it challenges you also on a new skill and, and set your alarm for 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever that time block is, a little earlier in the morning you get up, you can incorporate that ritual, but make it a must to feed your mind with good nourishment every single morning. That's the priming. Now, I'm going to jump, I'm going to, there's more things that we can do in our morning rituals, exercising, uh, breathing, or uh, getting, getting a walk outside, getting some sunlight. These things, of course, are going to fill you up emotionally and set you up for the demands of high performance sales. Because high performance sales, when we're dealing with people and facing resistance and pushing ourselves outside of our boundaries, it is, it creates a, an emotional stressor. Now, stress within reason, um, uh, managed, is actually a good thing because it makes us better and stronger. Unmanaged stress is not a good thing. So mindset by priming in the morning and then the evening. This is the beautiful thing. Every evening, do a debrief. And I recommend journaling your thoughts. And, and journaling is as simple as opening up a, a book, any book, just some line pages and do a mental dump and, and talk about your wins. Just go, great, what was, what was great about today? What did, what did I learn? How can I improve? And what am I excited about tomorrow? Three, four simple questions. So what was great? What did I enjoy? What were some of the magic moments? What did I learn? See, sometimes people look at failure as final, but failure really is a process of learning and growing and becoming better and getting sharper. So what did I learn? How can I improve? And what am I excited about for tomorrow? See, so <clears throat> excitement is actually something that you can self-generate. And, and, one of the things with mindset also is taking a look at the outcome. So you do have a goal. And one of those goals is not necessarily activity based. It's not, I'm going to make more money. I'm going to work harder. It's going to be, excuse me, 
it's going to be what is at the what is at the finish line and the finish line really we need to visualize that outcome and we need to feel it and we need to own it and we need to know it and that with that you're going to give yourself that that rocket fuel that's going to continue on on the journey so take that moment and take a moment maybe it's it's a uh, um, a 15 to 20 minute break in the day where you just go in, in solitude. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's just a quiet moment. Maybe it's a cup of tea. Maybe it's going outside. Maybe it's just sitting on your balcony or whatever it might be. And just kind of fill your cup again and, and think about where you are going and the end result in a positive, affirmative, uh, futuristic state. And so the third superpower we talked about smarter goals. We talked about mindset. If you've just joined us, we're talking about doubling your sales in the next 90 days. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this. And the number three super habit is productivity hacks. So when we talk about productivity hacks, what are some of our key hacks that's going to give us that effectiveness, give us that edge so we can leverage time in our favor? Number one, time blocking. By the way, if you haven't grabbed a pen, these are things that you may have heard of before, but are you applying? This is this is something that I've found to be able to, to manage three companies simultaneously, to be able to be effective and not just uh, get ideas, but to, to really execute and to move the ball down the field, especially if you've, you've got so much stuff to do and you and you need to be able to delegate to your team what's going to happen where you're going to get the most productivity is blocking so you've got a day planner it's not a to-do list it is what is happening between eight o'clock and nine o'clock what's happening you know for a two-hour block and, and when you're in professional sales when you're a high performance leader it's so important that you make your connections and your communications the number one weakness for sales people globally is guess what lack of activity in prospecting consistently and so if you are going to to time block the number one thing you need to time block on a daily basis is that's right making calls so if you're doubling your your sales then there needs to be a level of doubling your activity of making calls text social media follow-ups posts uh, your 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 emails, whatever templates that you're using, you incorporate those. And speaking of templates, is rewriting an email over and over, rewriting a text over and over is a it's inefficient. And so so we do need to set up those those templates to be more effective. So we got our time blocking, and really time blocking is is non-negotiable interruptions. Your phone is shut off if you're. If you have a home-based business and you're doing some in the home and some in the field and you're connecting, communicating with clients from your house, you have a separate room or you have an area that's blocked off. It's undisturbed, even if you have young children. So, so important to block that because you can, you can often do more in three hours of focused effort than many people can do in an entire day. And by the way, the average person at a working environment is only 38% effective. So yeah, for three hours, you can get it eight hours of productivity. If it's undisturbed, unfocused, no surfing, no texting, phone is off and getting what you need to get done. And so another productivity hack is, is uh, leveraging with automation. And so many of you, we all know AI, <laughs> but it, was, it, it, it is so interesting. I was on a uh, educational platform learning learning about some AI tools recently and there was a poll and more than 80% of the people participating didn't have a clue. What? How are you leveraging AI? And here's what's kind of neat is we have some incredible tools that we're going to be unveiling and, and sharing with the community in the near future. So make sure you pay attention to that because we uh, automation like in a CRM and, and autoresponders and little chatbots and things like that. Those are becoming a norm nowadays, but there's some really cool AI hacks that we'll be able to share with you shortly. But what we really want to do is focus on what matters most. Right. And so when I look at whatever my schedule is on the day is I'm focusing on will it make money? 
income producing activities, IPA. These, these are the things, so rather than getting busy, being efficient and shuffling paperwork, I'm getting things done that matter. And if it's not an IPA, shift gears and move on to tasks that will it make money. And so the majority of your time needs to be focused on that and the rest needs to be leveraged out. So pro tip, uh, W-I-M-M, will it make money? Superpower number four, P's and Q's. Mind your P's and Q's, and that is prospecting and qualifying. We alluded to that earlier, sales champions. And what we really need to do is we need to talk to more people. And rather than just working harder, grinding away, superpower here is referrals. It's not a secret. So the question is how are you gonna leverage more referrals? Well, referrals are if people like you, like your product, they trust you and you have a relationship. By the way, relationships are not established from a one-time communication. It is an ongoing thing that is nurtured. Play it forward. And so as you are building your clientele and as you're amplifying your referral base, here's a question, grab a pen. Don't ask, do you know somebody? Or can I have referrals? The first thing you want to do is get your story aligned. And so your story is the journey that you're on. And all heroes have a journey. And all, all heroes on a journey do have resistance. And so you being a superhero in your, in your doubling your sales in 90 day challenge is you want to let them know that you have been challenged. Now, maybe you yourself have challenged yourself, but you have been challenged on this mission, on this task that is almost unattainable and you need help. And guess what? Friends help friends, right? But you got to ask, you got to ask nicely, you got to keep asking and you got to ask until. And so when you're focused on a referral based business, uh, you're building clients into friendships and you're enrolling them into your story, into your journey. And so you're in a very special contest and you do need their help. And in everything I've acquired in, in my life, in our, in our family and, and all the, 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 the beautiful things in our lifestyle is because I've asked for a favor and somebody has asked somebody else for a favor and somebody has asked somebody else for the favor. And so, so create those relationships, create that story and do ask for the favor and don't be meager or otherwise you'll have skinny children. You got to ask nicely and you got to keep on asking and you got to be persistent because a referral business is going to be multiple, multiple times easier to sell and generate even more referrals from. Okay. So ask the question, not do you know somebody? Who do you know? So make a note. Who do you know that ABC? Who do you know would be the, the likely candidate to get ignited and excited about learning more about what we're sharing with you here today? Three by three, this is beautiful. I absolutely love this. And so um, there was a poll taking that 42%, 42%, somewhere around 40% of salespeople, they make one call, one communication, one outreach, and they stop. Yet 96% of any leads that are converted are happen after the sixth attempt. That doesn't mean that everyone converts, but those that do convert happen after the sixth attempt. There's about 80 after the fifth attempt. So you got to go the extra mile and you got to make multiple communications on multiple platforms. I'll repeat that. We live in an omni-platform communication society. That means texting is not enough. I'm sorry. We text to talk. Talking, we actually can communicate at a much higher level because we are, we, we've got more emotions. We've got sound. We've got tonality. We've got pace. We've got a higher level of communication. We can express emotion much better with voice tonality than we can with an emoji. So, so text to talk. Um, when we're leaving a voice message, by the way, if you're leaving a voice message, somebody that has a cell phone, the new iOS actually will pop up the message. And they, if it's important they, and, and they see it's relevant, they will answer. But here's a three by three challenge. What you do is you make three points of contact in three separate days using three separate platforms. For example, day one, you will call and leave a voicemail and leave an email. The next one is you'll text and do a social media posting. The next one is you'll, you will uh, reach out again on another platform. Okay. So if you're business to business, maybe it might be LinkedIn. 
if your business consumer it might be on Instagram or, or Facebook, but you're using multi channels, you challenge yourself because what happens when you hit up that prospect with the frequency, you may have caught them at the wrong time, you may have caught them at the wrong time, but with different platforms, they might be looking at different platforms at different times. And when you get that repetition in there, there's an external obligation for them to respond. Even, even if they're going to brush you off, okay, I'd rather have them brush me off on the front end rather than chase them around uh, an, an empty promise, okay? So do the three by three outreach challenge and, um, and let's move on. That's right. By the way, if you've just joined us here, thank you. We're talking about the doubling your sales in 90 days. We're in a new month and a new quarter. We're in harvest season. We're actually in the best time to do business. You know, there's a thing called Black Friday is coming up next month. We've all heard of Black Friday. Where does the word Black Friday come from? It means in the black, meaning most businesses are not making a profit until the final month or two of the year. Think about this. If a business, if the average business is making 8 to 12% a net profit margin, that means they're not making money often until the last month of the year. So, so think about this. You could actually start doubling or tripling the amount of uh, profitability just by you pushing on this challenge now. So, so the final thing we're going to talk about is the superpower of maintaining momentum. Okay. So how do you keep yourself engaged for 90 days? I've done so many uh, promos over the last three decades where we've done a push day, push weekend, We've done a push month. We've done a back-to-back -back push month. We've done a 90-day push. The longer it is, the more you need to rely on strategy than just enthusiasm. Enthusiasm alone, you can go a weekend. You can push and, and wear yourself to the bone in, in a month. But to do it over a 60 or 90-day time frame takes a little bit of tools and tactics. And there needs to be an appropriate pace. So sprint, rest, sprint, jog at a faster pace. So we need to have a cadence that is sustainable. And here's a couple of little tips because an object in motion stays in motion. I'll repeat that. If you are going fast, success loves speed, you can continue to go fast with less effort because you've got velocity. If you are stopped, like right now, if you're going, yeah, I'm going to do the challenge today, but your, your activity level is super low, expect that you're going to be grinding for the next two, you know, a week to two weeks. And I've seen this so many times where somebody sets a big goal and they're working at it and they're frustrated because, because the, the results that you have now is because of the activities you had two or three weeks ago. So regardless of where you're at here, we want to maintain momentum. That is the key. So those of you that are joining us here for the first time and are going to be joining the challenges, there's a link down below there. And I'll talk to you about some of the benefits of being part of this challenge. It's totally free. There's, there's a lot of great benefits being part of the community. But momentum is the key game. And so, so one of the things to keep our momentum is keep it visual. I like the, the tracking tool, a visual tracking tool, and something that you can see on the wall. Maybe it's a thermometer. Here is your goal after 90 days. There's an activity-based goal. There's a, a sales results-based goal. And so keeping momentum is visually seeing your progress. Now, sometimes if you're behind pace, it actually creates a little bit of tension inside of you because you're like, I know I'm, I, I got to make it happen. But that is actually what brings the best of you. That urgency within you, you transfer that urgency back to your prospect for setting the appointment now rather than later. I recommend you, you partner up with an accountability partner. Now, who is your accountability partner? It could be your manager uh, or leader in, in your business. <clears throat> your accountability partner is somebody that you look up to, somebody that you respect, and somebody that holds a higher standard of excellence. Why? Because <clears throat> you will often get into your comfort zone. Okay? We all do it. I do it. Right? We all have this comfort zone. But everything you want in life that's worthwhile is outside of your comfort zone. And so talking to that accountability partner is going to give you another reason to stretch. Now, <clears throat> it's important to make sure that this person is committed to your success and they're committed to their success as well, too. Now, if you have somebody that you're partnered with business, maybe challenge them to be a part of the doubling your business in 90 days. And both of you end up doing this together harmoniously, collectively, synergistically. 
and uh, check in two to three times a week. So it could be a five to 10 minute conversation. What's great? What are you challenged about? What's your breakthrough? And you can, you can inspire each other by leading by example. You can challenge each other when you're faced with adversity and you can encourage yourself when you're not feeling optimal. Getting an accountability partner will ensure a higher level of performance. Celebrate your wins. You know, and sometimes we can, we can have a, uh, a bad day. Sometimes we can have a bad week. And, and when I say bad, I mean, usually it's outcomes, right? Uh, maybe it's rescheduling of appointments or whatever, but we want to take a look at the great things that we've done on a daily basis. So again, back to that journaling, debriefing, rewarding yourself and praising yourself and acknowledging yourself for those little wins because little wins create the momentum. And take care of you. If you, you know, we, we talked about this being a, uh, a marathon, a marathon of hope, a marathon of courage, a mar marathon of strength. It's not a sprint. You can only sprint so long, so fast, and then you, you crash and burn. And so what we do want to do is set ourselves up for success. Because if your temple fails, if you, if you get emotionally burnt out, if you lose your, your enthusiasm, then you have to take a step back, heal, rejuvenate, recharge. And that's going to take time and time is money in your business. So you want to maintain that momentum. How are you going to do that? Take care of you. Make sure you're eating right. If you're a road warrior, if you're on the road, if you're living out of your car, if you're hitting appointments and you got to drive through traffic, things like that, make sure you have a plan of a road warrior snack to feed and nourish the body. Make sure you have water, stay in hydrated. Make sure you have those electrolytes and and take your supplements. More importantly, get your sleep. At least six to seven hours recharge and rejuvenate and feel refreshed. And so you can do this. You've got this thing. You're on this call because, and you're watching, and you're still watching now because you are a leader. You defy the odds. You're ready to step up to a new challenge of changing lives, of changing your life, of changing your family's life, of doubling your business because it's not just the financial words. You're going to make a ton of money and that's great but what is that going to do for you it's going to buy you time it's going to buy you freedom it's going to buy you choices it's going to give you a lifestyle you deserve and so we invite you to take this challenge if you've not done it yet just there's a link down below make sure you click it uh, click in your name address we don't spam you we will immediately send you this this is my gift to you this is awesome this is a guide six actionable steps to double your business in the next 90 days and uh, you can download that. We've also, we stay connected with you uh, three times, maybe four times a week where you will receive some communications in the form of maybe a video. You can go to our YouTube, by the way. You can check out our YouTube at the James Stanton. Follow us, of course, on, on uh, Facebook, social media, things like that. Um, I'm honored that, that we've had this opportunity to share here, ladies and gentlemen. And the most important thing, okay, is you. Okay. And so challenge yourself, everything, every joy, every, every opportunity, every bliss, every financial benefit, every magic moment you have is when you push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone and the short term pain will give you that long term gain. It's better to, it, I'll tell you, whatever sales you're in, it's better to be harder yourself on the front end because it's easier in the back end. Double down on your efforts. There was a claim I made that doubling your business in 90 days, you don't have to necessarily double your, your efforts because if you double your efforts, quantum physics takes place and you get that momentum. You get sharper, you get better, more referrals come in. And, and in many cases, I've seen people triple, quadruple, 5X, and even more the amount of results that they create. So let's really embrace this challenge. Okay, do it. Let's do it together. I'm going to go live for those of you that are on the challenge, we'll invite you to our next live event in about 30 days. And that's all I have to say about that. It is the first day of your, the rest of your life, October the 1st. Let's, let's sprint. Let's sprint for coming out of the gates for the week and, and pace yourself all the way through this next 90 days. It's going to be a wonderful journey. And I look forward to seeing you. And I mean all of you as sales leaders at the top. Thanks for chiming in. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace. Bye-bye.